Okay, Barry's here. Let's talk Everton. He's absolutely demolished Sunderland eventually. Um, I mean, first and foremost, happy about that. And secondly, we'll, we'll move on to go on to talk about your striking options and what have you. So, 6 2, you should come away absolutely buzzing from that. But from what, I've, from what I know, you've not. No, I'm happy. I took 1 0. Yeah, yesterday, so I'm obviously oh, delighted. Cheer up. Delighted yeah. that <laughs> we have six goals. Six. Basically, no, Barry, no. Barry's being careful here because he's used his own sensational analogy off camera and he doesn't want to get pedded, <laughs> um, which which actually doesn't sound as bad as it sounds. Uh, it means yeah, getting, I mean, basically means get left on the cutting room floor. Um, but, you know, I think you were saying is that the Sunderland were there to be an yeah, I think No, I think the only thing, the only criticism I'd have is that Everton stopped at six and just, with half an hour to go, just started passing the ball around. And as a fan, it's frustrating. I'm saying to, to Pep before about it, that if we'd have got the sixth goal in like the 85th minute, you'd have come out bouncing, but yeah. it was 63rd minute, I think it was, when it hit 6 2, and you're thinking, go ahead. We should look like we're going to score every time you attack here, and then it's frustrating when you sat there and you see them just. I can understand why they do it. You just play it out. They're, they're chasing shadows, aren't they? And you know the game's obviously over. But um, made up to won the game. You know, thought under Big Sam it was going to be one of those horrible mm. one nils or nil nil or whatever, and, and it couldn't have been uh, further from the truth. It was like a, a basketball game at times. It's just moving on from it. Then, then you. I mean, look, Aruna Kone. I don't think anybody. Would if you, nobody's put money on Coney getting a hat trick ever in their lives, um, but when he plays the two of them together, I know it's been more of an option off the bench. Mm. But you know, Everton score goals when those two guys are on the pitch. Do you think that's something that Martinez should be looking to push on two up front, or, or at the very least, getting two strikers at some position on the pitch? Definitely, and it's two up front. I'm fed up and bored with this obsession with one centre forward, and that's it. This is why the, the games are. This is why mm. saying about United before Rooney struggling as the one. It doesn't work all the time. It works if you're Barcelona and you're outstanding, or it'll work from time to time if you're Arsenal because they do it well. But they've got players in, in those final days that do stay and hang around. Yeah. Like Sanchez will stay not too far away from Giroud or Walcott or Arsenal. But for Everton, too often for us, we're I, like Lukaku is isolated. Yeah. So when he puts Kone up there with him, Lukaku looks happier because he's got someone sharing the load with him. Kone does everything Lukaku can't in terms of he can take the ball, he's strong, he'll knock people out the way. And that allows Lukaku then to, to do the other bits, which is, you know, playing Pele esque crosses with the outside of his foot <laughs> and running through and going round the keep. And I think Everton look a more dangerous side with it. You've got Delafeu there, you've got Barkley running the teams. Mm. And for me, I've been banging on about it for a while. He's got to find a way to get two lads right down the middle, yeah. whether that be Kone and Lukaku, Naismith and Lukaku. Morales and Lukaku yeah. it's got to be two lads right down the middle but Kone was, was fantastic I've been saying this Robbie for age, all season I kind of said and whether it pans out I don't know but I think that the team that figures out how to get two up front because the formations have changed and 4-4-2 seems to be dead and buried in modern football you look back to Liverpool's best form a couple of years ago we managed to get Suarez and Sturridge in the same team and working what do you, what do you think are you, are you, are you happy seeing one up front or would you I mean like as an Arsenal example if you could get somebody right if you could find a way to make two players up front work for you would you rather see that I guess you can't really complain <coughs> sitting yeah. right at the top of the yeah, bench the ball, the front. Yeah. No, I mean I think it's like what you said you, you can play one up front but you've got to also have players close to them and I think that's what also have done well where they've, they've um, Alexis and um, whoever's the supporting players Ozil and that will get close to them um, not many teams nowadays go with two up front and they're so scared of getting overrun in midfield yeah. that yeah. you know they just don't want to go with that old fashioned two players up front as a matter of fact you'll only see it when teams are losing mm. yeah. and there's like 15 minutes of a game left and then all of a sudden they revert to it so I'd love to see it come out but I just at the moment you just you know, don't I, just, those, I, I can't I can't see it I can't see it come back but look at yesterday's game if, with, with um, Everton Maybe if they'd have gone with that from the front, they would have probably annihilated Sunderland right from the beginning of the game. You know, um, I just think some teams. I think you've got to be bold. I mean, again, let's we, we discussed Man United already and, and Wayne Rooney's issues, but inside before, I don't, you know, Wayne Rooney hasn't been as good since 
but that season with Robin Van Persie having two having two guys there Man United's history is built on yeah. so many great striking partnerships down there yeah. same with Liverpool same with all these clubs <laughs> it's I think what do you think it, it, should, would Man United be better off if they could find a way to get Rooney and Martial for example playing up top together I think it's a tricky one to be honest I think it's just, just part of, part of the modern game now. Obviously, said you know, you're being diplomatic. <laughs> 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 Tactically speaking, <laughs> I just think I don't want to get with your ball. Your ball. Let's move on and talk about something. Else. Aren't you <laughs> bored that it's every team's like almost the same? They no. all try and do the same thing, and it's, it's going to take the same someone brave passing it round. Whether it's Klopp or whoever else, you've got to come in who's brave and goes. This is what we do, and it that's the next trend to take over. You're saying about not having men in midfield, you've got the right midfield makeup, it doesn't matter who yeah. you've got. It's all about the makeup of your side. You're not worried about an extra man in midfield, you play three five two. Yeah. When you'd have five men across and you'd have two centre forward. City, when they're at their best, have two centre forward. So they yeah. did because <coughs> Echo and Aguero and you yeah. couldn't get near yeah. them. They yeah. just destroyed it, and that was because yeah, yeah, it's alright. His legs were still there, he was able yeah. to get up and down. However, when they went into Europe with that formation, they get absolutely slow. Well, it's horses for courses, so, isn't it? Yeah. It's horses yeah. for court. You've got to be careful with how you play, but again, it's for me, it's about getting the best out of the players. You know what I want to see back? I want to see the, the shades of Sunderland, Big Nile Quinn and, and Kevin, Phillips. Kevin Phillips, the big man and the little man. Making I mean, you know, as you say, game. Sunderland, I mean, how bad are Sunderland? Oh, they are the, yeah, the worst. I mean, was sat there yesterday thinking, I know, know that I've got some good mates who are Sunderland fans, but no, just sat there and thought, probably the worst team I've ever seen. Really? Uh, defensively. They were quite bright going forward, yeah. but one ball. 50 yeah, just split them. I mean, Delafay. Sebast- Sebastian. Did Sebastian Coates Yeah, he was centre half. He was centre half. Come up with a clapper for us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, Luke Ark would have ended it in any way if he wouldn't have put his foot out. But it made it all that more sweeter that it was the, the game, that the goal that put us back in front after yeah. he just worked hard. So, oh, nice one, Seb. He's got, I always said about Sebastian Coates that he looks like a grock. Scouts Parliament's a really hard, big man, but he's got the soul of a poet. He does look <laughs> like he sits beneath trees with making daisy chains and writing oats. Oats to gales. <laughs> Oh, it's the girls who've never noticed them. Um, uh, uh, well, they have a bicycle kick a QPR. He did, yeah, he's got, he had, he's got something like he's just not as a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, he's maybe got like a you know, paper on those skills programs like Wayne Rooney Street Cycle or something like that. Like, he would probably be all right on that. Uh, it's, like I say, it's an, it's, an, it's an interesting one, and I like to see it's exciting when managers are brave that way because we, we all pay a lot of money to watch football, and I think it's fine when it, when it works. When you've got like in your instance, if you've got the right guys playing behind centre forwards, I think mm-hmm. it can work and it can work very well. But so often you see that one striker get isolated, or or, and, or you've got to be this, like a specimen to to play that. I think it works better for Arsenal with Giroud when he's that guy because mm-hmm. he, he he holds he's the ball up, he's good, he's, he's good in the air, isn't he? It could work better with Benteke. I don't see it working. It hasn't worked with Origi for Liverpool. I don't see it working with Sturridge. It's not really working with Rooney. Maybe it's time for managers to, to, to grow a set and throw two two up top. Go on, mate. Off on Zay. Smash the diplomacy. <laughs> diplomacy be f***ed, go on. So what you're going to say, go on. Maybe this, this is the point that because, um, you know, obviously you mentioned the money aspect of it, you know, um, that's obviously got a lot to do with the tactics as well because there's so much money, you know, to be won and lost. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the, it, it, it affects the tactics so much like when you looked at uh, football like say you know when the premiership first started um, you know it was just like free flowing like you know like teams you know running at each other you know it was like two versus two whereas like now you know you'd have like you know one striker and like you know f- you know four or five defenders on, and you know it really like closing you know, closing them down sort of thing yeah. it's, they need to like I say, it needs to be a tactic because that's the problem is that you don't want to be that team that goes balls out and get annihilated yeah. every single week, do you? Right, it, it, that's it. There's got to be a sense of that comes with it. Let's your thoughts on that. Then, do you think more teams should go with more strikers on the pitch? I'm not talking like Steve McLaren, Middlesbrough Panic Stations forwards, where you throw every <laughs> forward on the club at the club <laughs> on for the last ten minutes of a match. But you know, go a shade brave and stick another forward on. Worry about make the opposition worry about you more than than the other way around. So thoughts in the comments. Check out the rest of the show. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe. Do it now to the Boston YouTube channel and check out the rest of the show.